be courteous. Two. Know how to drive. Three. Both hands on wheel. Four. Watch traffic signs. Five. Keep a safety margin. Six. Use hand signals. Seven. Keep right. Eight. Keep sober. Nine. Stop when angry. Ten. Obey all laws. In the motor capital of the world, they're trying something new in a campaign to make careless drivers and absent-minded pedestrians stop, look, and listen. This roving voice of the police is a watchdog of traffic, giving orders at just the right time to make both drivers and jaywalkers safety conscious, like this. Please, lady, always look at the traffic signal before you step from the curb. Red signal lights mean that pedestrians as well as motorists should stop and wait. Mr. Motorist, be careful. This is the voice of safety speaking. Do not double park your car. When you do, you not only violate the traffic ordinance, you also create a traffic hazard. And is his face red? In this experiment, the mask collects the air the young lady breathes. The air is measured and then analyzed in a laboratory to determine the amount of energy she uses under different working conditions. Now, we'll give the young lady 80 decibels of unpleasant noises. That is, about the amount of noise in a traffic jam on New Year's Eve. Hold your ears. The results prove that under pleasant, quiet conditions, the average person uses 19% less energy to do 10% more work. Throughout the great manufacturing plants, tools, instruments, gauges, work with almost uncanny intelligence, sorting and selecting, checking, passing or rejecting, ever on guard for the slightest imperfection. Accuracy, precision, exactness have been brought to new significance in the microscopic world of scientific measurements. Utilizing everything that modern science and research can provide in the way of measurements that are precisely so.
Extra, something extra. Posies for the girlfriend? Yes, sir. And an extra blossom Elmer to wear in his buttonhole. Everyone likes that little something extra. A dozen rolls and the baker tosses in an extra one to make it a baker's dozen. The butcher throws in an extra bone for the bow wow. Every locality has a different name for it. Way down east in New England, they call it something to boot. In the deep south, they call it lanyard. At your neighborhood service station, they call it Esso. The new Esso gives you premium performance, unexcelled at regular price. And the new Esso Extra is unexcelled at any price. Extra quick starts, extra power, extra anti-knock. You can take your choice. These two great gasolines are both extra value for the money. For service that is tops and gas that's extra fine. There's a smile for every mile at the Esso sign. E-S-S-O makes your car go. Happy motoring. like the cereal? Oh, yeah. But it's a little mushy. It's not crisp like the kind my breakfast pals serve Dad and me at home. Your breakfast pals? Sure. They come every morning as soon as I whistle. What? I'm Snap. I'm Crackle. I'm Pop. And the service, Bobby. Oh, yeah. Hey, gang. These guys is muscling in. Let's get them. Come on, Mushy. Hey, let's go, Sobby. gentlemen, this is Walter O'Keefe, and here's a pretty scene, a father and his five daughters. You can only see three of them. The other two are behind him, and he's behind the eight ball, to coin a phrase. The three girls all need new dresses for the big party, and Papa's saying he can't afford it. Yeah, you old meanie. Aw, oh, don't go away, mad girls. There's still hope. Oh, there he is. Well, where is it? Here he is in person. It's the singer man. He's a friendly fellow, he is, and he always speaks well of you people whenever I see him. You'll like him. You see, now he sent them to the Singer Sewing Center, and in no time at all, the girls will be taught how to make their own evening gowns. Yes, thank you, I'll come in. By the way, you know, this is almost like a private club. You get a lot of friendly help. I, I think you'll like it. I do. Now let's see how those dresses the girls made for themselves stand the competition. First place, look at Betty, a trim, tiny, tasty tidbit sheet. And Janet looks as if she just stepped out of the salon of a Fifth Avenue couturier. And here's Nancy. She looks like a page out of both. Well, there's the happy ending. The girls learned how to sew. It was easy. And they got three dresses for the price of one. There's a Singer sewing shop near you. See you there, girls. But wait a minute. That's a convincing demonstration, all right, but what about our girlfriend, that most important of all person, Mrs. Housewife? What do more suds mean to her? Sure, that's what counts. Let's leave the laboratory for a moment and ask her. Madam, will you tell us what suds mean to you in washing? Suds? Why, I want lots of suds. Every woman does, whether it's for washing clothes, dishes, or general cleaning. I see. Well, then, the amount of suds you get from a soap influences your purchases? Indeed, yes. I want the soap that gives the most suds.
This is a factory. This is a machine in the factory. This is the workman who tends the machine in the factory. And this is what the workman makes on his machine in the factory. This is a widget. A widget might be a radio, a refrigerator, a musical instrument, or a motor car. A widget, you know, is just a symbol for any manufactured product that people use. Inside the widget factory, there are lots of widget-making machines. And the skilled workmen who run these machines turn out the finest widgets you've ever seen. They're as modern, attractive, and efficient as careful design and fine craftsmanship can possibly make them. People will certainly want to buy these widgets because they are so fine and up-to-date. Here comes a man now with money to buy a widget. He is a farmer. He needs a widget on his farm, and he's in a hurry to buy one. Here's your money, Mr. Widget Maker, and here's your widget, Mr. Farmer. That's all there is to it. The deal is completed. Everyone is happy, the widget maker has the money, and the farmer has his widget. And here comes another man who wants to buy a widget. This man is a coal miner, and he's bringing his money with him. He wants his new widget right away, too. These certainly must be good widgets, because there is such a widespread demand for them. Everyone seems to need a widget. For instance, this man is a steel manufacturer. Apparently, he can use a widget. And here's a lumberman, too. They all want widgets. Business is certainly good. These people are customers because they are willing to trade money for widgets. And all the customers take their widgets home to all parts of the country. Look at all that money the widget builder has taken in from the sale of his widgets. But now that the builder has the money, he has to pay out a large part of it to the workmen in the factory. That's all right, though, because these workmen need the money to buy food and clothing and to pay the rent. And maybe even a lot of them will want to use some of their money to buy widgets for themselves. But since so many widgets have been made and sold, the widget builder is running out of raw materials to make into more widgets. So out here where the raw materials come in, he buys cotton. This widget factory uses a lot of cotton. And what do you know? It's our farmer friend back again. The farmer wants to sell his cotton to the widget maker. Well, turnabout is fair play, and now the widget maker has more raw material. And the farmer has his money back again, in addition to the widget he already bought. The widget maker needs coal and steel and lumber too. So here are the coal miner and the steel man and the lumber man to sell them. Just a little while ago, these men were the widget maker's customers. But now the widget maker is their customer. He has money to trade for raw materials, a lot of different materials from a lot of places. So the widget maker is a buyer as well as a seller. Evidently in this widget business, somebody is always buying and selling. Everybody is somebody else's customer. The raw materials that the widget maker buys the products of field and mine and woods and shop go into one end of the machine and out of the other end of the machine come nice, new, shiny widgets. And that's all there is to it when everything runs as smoothly as it does in this factory. With men and machines all at work, this factory becomes a beehive of activity. Selling widgets, buying raw materials, making more widgets. A number one widgets that any customer would be glad to have. And while widgets are being bought and sold at one end of the factory, raw materials are being sold and bought at the other end. 
So, with everything humming along smoothly, and everyone working for somebody else, money seems to travel round and round in this widget business. Maybe that's true in other lines of business, too. Don't you think so? Pete. We were held up, Tom. Three men. They took the flying B payroll and headed up toward Pine Gap, and they took Uncle with them. Come on in the house, quick. We'll get the boys together and we'll go in. No, I'll take the jitney into town and get my car. All right, Betty. Hello? Ring up the boys, man. Tell them to meet me at Pine Creek Forks. The Flying B payroll's been robbed. Pete Bell has been kidnapped. Tell the boys to ride. Hey, George, where'd you put that ammunition? It's in your desk. Which drawer? The middle one. Hello, May. They've gone. Have you got the other boys? Some of them. I'm calling the blacksmith now. Hello? Charlie, payroll robbery. Be secure for Pine Creek Court. Pick up Bill and Frank on the way. I'm riding, Harry. Who set their wagon on the way? Where's your paw, Junior? He's back on the far section with the Reaper. In there, Bill. Get down off of it. I can't hear you. Wait a minute. No! what you say? Somebody held up the Jitney. Probably the Hicks gang. Bring your horse. They've headed for Pine Creek. Guess they're going through the gap. Hurry up and I'll meet your Franks. And so, as the storm breaks around them, the sheriff's posse gathers at Pine Creek Forks, prepared for action. Hicks and his gang have been around this country too long. We're going to clean them out, today. But we got to remember that old Pete Bellman is with them, and we don't want him to get hurt. All right, boys, let's hit out. Come on, men, we're gaining on them. They've seen us, Tom. Right, fellas. They probably have flesh horses at the creek. Yeah. We'll set fire to the gap and stop. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Slim, you chop a couple of them small trees. Right. We'll spread a fire they can't get through. These are pretty green for burning, Sam. Grass is dry as tinder here. That'll get it started. Shorty, yeah. we get some of that dead wood burning in a hurry. Grass is catching on. It's dry, all right. How about the trees, Slim? About ready? Move back. He's coming now. Got another one farther back. The posse's closing in on it. Here they come. We better hold them off till this fire gets too hot to cross. There, miss, you see the heterodynes are feeding back into the stimulus reaction activators, causing non-snaps of the motor control resistor units. Oh, that's good. No, lady, that's bad. But your regenerative circuits are tuned asynchronously, and that causes concatenation in the intermediate amplifiers. Well, that's bad, isn't it? No, that's good. From now on, I don't think there'll be the slightest trouble with your robot. 
your domestic problems are completely solved. Well, thank you very much. Well, that's perfectly all right. And if there's anything else you want to know about your robot, don't hesitate to give us a ring. Good day. Answer the door. Sign here. Yes, Rollo the robot, the chromium-plated butler, is just a daydream after all. But not so Rollo's little brother and sister robots, the millions of small mechanical servants that never ask for afternoons off, the amazing machines and gadgets that almost seem to think for themselves. The tiny clockwork brains and heat regulators on our kitchen stoves apparently do almost everything except read the cookbook. Thinking machines like this keep golden brown slices of toast from turning into slabs of charcoal and keep the coffee hot until we're ready to start dunking. Then there's a tea kettle that's been trained never to boil dry. When the water is gone, the kettle simply pulls out its own attachment plug. And here's a gadget that ought to raid a bowel from every dog in the country. A Fido feeder that never forgets when the pup is dining home alone and the rest of the family is dining out. What's more, it tells him when to come and get it.
blossoms. In a restless search for new opportunities and new ways of living, the mystery and the promise of distant horizons always have called men forward. Created by the crossing of new horizons, new ways of living and new thinking have laid the foundation for most of what is good in life today with the promise of more tomorrow. As distant families have become neighbors and as people have constantly widened their viewpoints while multiplying the number of their contacts, more desires have developed to be satisfied. And with the demand for all of these conveniences and improvements, opportunities for employment of men, money and materials have increased. And thus the highways of social and commercial developments are widening without end or limit except the imagination, vision of men who do new things. Today, engineers are always leading us higher, widening the trails, while our men of science are broadening all our mental avenues with new activities, activities based on modern pioneering into new fields of research. Men exploring and pioneering for all to follow Men endlessly seeking something new along the roads of civilization in the great unknown expanses of applied science and scientific research. All the new highways of research and exploration have brought to us more raw materials, new raw materials, new combinations of raw materials, new and greater productivity of the soil, making more plentiful an ever-widening range of goods. And as these goods come down from the farm, the mine, and the mill, progress on all the highways of human activity leads us to more opportunities for employment. An ever-widening range of goods made ever more plentiful from east to west, from north to south. strides in providing more things for more people have been made at a time when the influence of new geographical frontiers was about over. Mentally and physically, we are progressing toward new horizons. To help us get a glimpse into the future of this unfinished world of ours, there has been created for the New York World's Fair a thought-provoking exhibit of the developments ahead of us, the greater and better world of tomorrow that we in America are building today, a vivid tribute to the American scheme of living, whereby individual effort, the freedom to think, and the will to do have given birth to a generation of men who always want new fields for greater accomplishment and will always find new things for all others to enjoy. Come, let's travel into the future. What will we see? And now we have arrived in this wonder world of 1960, the World's Fair exhibit modeled with such artistry and skill that we must continually remind ourselves 
the world we are now seeing is a vision, an artistic conception which may undergo many changes as it develops into the great realities of tomorrow. And now we see an enlarged section of 1960s express motorway. Along the ledge of this beautiful precipice, traffic moves at unreduced rates of speed. Safe distance between cars is maintained by automatic radio control. Curved sides assist the driver in keeping his car within the proper lane under all circumstances. The keynote of this motorway, safety. Safety with increased speed. Here is an American city replanned around a highly developed modern traffic system. The parks of the city have continuity, proper placement. These areas are united into long green strips surrounding each community. Along both banks of the river, beautifully landscaped parks replace the outworn areas of an older day. An industrial docking basin, newly completed, takes care of all the shipping from the adjacent industrial area. On all express city thoroughfares, the rights of way have been so rooted as to displace outmoded business sections and undesirable slum areas whenever possible. Man continually strives to replace the old with the new. A quarter of a mile high skyscrapers tower with convenient rest and recreational facilities for all. On many of the buildings are landing decks for helicopters and auto gyros. Rich in sunshine is the city of 1960. Fresh air, fine green parkways, recreational and civic centers. Modern and efficient city planning, breathtaking architecture, each city block a complete unit in itself. Here is an important intersection in the great metropolis of 1960. Elevated sidewalks give a new measure of safety and convenience to pedestrians. They actually double the available width for traffic in the street. And so, we see some suggestion of the things to come. A world which far from being finished is hardly yet begun. A world with a future in which all of us are tremendously interested. Because that is where we are going to spend the rest of our lives. In a future which can be whatever we propose to make it. of us may have different ideas as to what that future will be. But every forward outlook reminds us that all the highways of all research and all communication, all the activities of science, lead us onward to better methods of doing things, with new opportunities for employment and better ways of living as we go on determined to unfold the constantly greater possibilities of the world of tomorrow as we move more and more rapidly forward penetrating new horizons in the spirit of individual enterprise in the great american way
And in the modern home, architects have done the same job of providing more space for everybody by making one room do the work of two or three. For instance, here's a dining room. And here's the guest room. And very attractive, too. But most families seldom use the guest room, and the dining room is used for only a short time each day. Instead of letting all this usable space go to waste, wouldn't it be nice if the two rooms could be combined into one big recreation room? Well, they can, and in a jiffy. How's that for roominess? With a playroom like this for home movies or games, relaxation won't be any problem for the people in this house, particularly if they follow Dr. Laird's suggestions. So remember these simple rules to keep relaxed. Get rid of those leftover tensions in the muscles of the face and head. We have to exert ourselves at the start to get started on the habit of relaxing. Concentrate on the forehead now. We can feel the tension there. Now exert yourself to relax it. More, still more. Look far away. Keep relaxing, stay away from noisy places, and value the ability to make your mind a blank. Do these things to untense, and we will approach each day with a better outlook, poised, relaxed. That's the way to let yourself go and have a better time going. Music, color, excitement. Who doesn't enjoy a football game? If you're one of the lucky ones able to get a ticket. But of course, if you're not, well, it's just too bad. unless you happen to live in some parts of the country where, thanks to the newest marvel of modern science, television, you can just lean back in a comfortable chair in the theater or in your own favorite chair at home, relax and watch the game. Out at the stadium, the television cameramen are seeing to it that you can follow every detail of the game. They're out there on the sidelines following every important piece of action. Cables connect the cameras with the mobile units, which are parked outside the stadium. And from these trucks, the scenes covered by the cameras are relayed to the main television transmitter. Television has come of age. Here, for instance, is a reproduction of one of the first images received on a television screen. Compare that crude picture with these of today, and you can judge for yourself how far along the road to perfection television has traveled. It is bringing entertainment to thousands of people. Through its magic, we are able to enjoy a combination of the radio, motion pictures, and the stage, right in the comfort of our own homes, simply by pushing a button and turning a dial. Of course, television can't perform such miracles as this, yet. But perhaps there's no harm wishing that it could. Along the 122 miles of major boulevards, there you'll find strategically located poster panels. Careful planning guarantees that wherever motor traffic moves, whether along the spectacular outer drive, the pleasant boulevards leading to the suburban neighborhoods, through the immense industrial centers or the busy marketplaces, scientifically planned locations present the poster panel showings. Paralleling this vast volume of motor traffic are the hundreds of thousands of people daily utilizing the various mass transportation systems. Here again we find ample evidence of careful selection. The many miles of street railway lines daily carrying over two million persons 
the bus systems, which day after day average over 164,000 passengers, and the elevated railroad, transporting more than 500,000 people per day, all receive their scientifically apportioned share of panels in the 100% poster showing. But scientifically planned showings must cover more than just the main thoroughfares of transportation. They must be arranged to reach consumers in every walk of life as they go about their daily tasks. Each day as thousands of persons visit the chain stores in their neighborhoods, their journey carries them past powerful messages advantageously placed on nearby poster panels. At night as they visit their favorite movie houses, or sporting centers. And in the day while going to and from the neighborhood drugstores and centrally located supermarkets, the local service stations, or to work in any one of the busy industrial centers, these hundreds of thousands of buyers repeatedly receive up to the minute information concerning products necessary to their daily living. Potential consumers are also reached by this all-inclusive medium. As purchase influencers, Chicago's 750,000 school children represent an active group of great value. Throughout the entire city of Chicago, the General Outdoor Advertising Company prides itself on the scientific selection of all locations offered in its 100% poster showing. Locations whose actual count guarantees net advertising circulation of over 2,100,000 people per day at only a few cents per thousand circulation. And so it is with every panel in every city in general outdoor advertising companies poster showing. Each location is selected on a basis of known rules of traffic. The number of persons who move past each panel over a given time is an accurate scientifically established figure. So accurate is this figure, it forms an immutable law. Where you find the poster panel, there you'll find the traffic moving to market. Strategic locations ensure repetition, and repetition creates consumer remembrance, driving home a message, not once, not twice, but many times, thus bridging the gap between the manufacturer and the consumer by scientifically charting the ebb and flow of populations and traffic, by erecting strategic power plants designed to generate consumer acceptance for American industrial products, General Outdoor Advertising Company is making its contribution both to modern business and to the great American public. Listen, Shh, fellas and girls, here's a little secret. It's just between you and me and the ticker. The war department doped this one out. John, suppose you were here in London. And Jane, suppose you were here in Florida, about 4,000 miles apart. And you want to get hitched. The war department says you can stay right where you are and get yourselves married in Tulsa, Oklahoma, by mail. And it's simple, too. John writes an I do letter to Oklahoma. Jane does the same. And Oklahoma says, I pronounce you man and wife. The only thing left is the distance between you and Jane. The War Department hasn't any idea what to do about that. But cheer up, kids. We'll have television soon.